It's mutton, I think. Mutton! Whoa. Big mutton, Whoa. baby! What? Look at that, baby! Monster mutton! Hey guys, welcome back to Life by the Bow. Today, as you guys can see, it's an absolutely gorgeous day. Um, we don't get them often this time of year, and uh, the weather forecast seemed to be right today. Didn't happen to us last time. Oh yeah. But we're gonna do a little fun fishing today. It's gonna be a little more relaxed. We're gonna do some yellow tailing. So this is a great thing to do with your family, friends. It's easy, it's fun, and it's very rewarding. That's right. I couldn't have said it better myself. So let's go ahead. We're gonna head out to the edge. We're gonna see what we can catch. Right now, we're pulling up to a spot, and we typically use a sonar in order to locate like good spots for fishing, but we're speeding up time. We're gonna put Clay in the water. He's gonna look at the bottom, see if there's any yellowtail swimming around, and if so, then we're gonna anchor up, throw the chum out, and start fishing. But sometimes it's easier for him just to jump in than it is to like do all that work, and then there's nothing there. So, Clay, you ready to get in that cold water? Ready. <laughs> So the first dive was successful. Saw a big ball of yellowtail down there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up up current, get some chum flowing, and see if we can get them up to the boat. So the most important thing before you guys are anchoring is you wanna figure out how your boat is gonna drift. The reason why is just because you throw your anchor in a specific spot, that doesn't mean that that's where your boat's going to stay. So what we did is we went up current from the spot that we just marked where those yellow tails were at. And what we did is we let the boat drift first. That way we know once we drop the anchor, we know which way the boat's going to go over that spot. You see, if you don't set up your drift before you anchor, you may throw your anchor and your boat may end up way off the spot. So the most important thing is before you throw, figure out which way the boat's going to go before you actually drop the anchor. So that way you make sure that the boat sits right on top of the spot. So we figured out our drift and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up current from our drift, throw the anchor. So that way we'll drift right back on top of the spot. All right, so here is the most important thing when it comes to yellow tailing is chum. So what we're gonna do is we got our big old mesh chum bag right here. I guess you could say chum hoop, so to speak. And we have those big holes just so we can get as much chum flowing as possible. And current is another thing that is huge. If you don't have current, basically whatever type of fishing you're doing is not gonna be successful. Whether it's out on the reef, patch reef, yellowtailing like we're doing here, even offshore fishing. Current is the biggest thing. And we seem to have some pretty good flow here. So we're gonna chum them up, see if they wanna cooperate today. You got one? Yep. A yellow tail? I think so. Feels Woohoo. like one. Started ripping out. And we have our first yellow tail. Check that out. He's a little guy. So cute. But hey, that's a start right there. Yellow tail have to be 12 inches maximum tail length. And if you guys have ever seen us using our D hookers in our videos, our D hookers are actually 12 inches long, which make them perfect for yellowtailing. So all we have to do is we have to put the tip of the D hooker to the tip of his mouth. And as you can see, he is short by about an inch, maybe inch and a half. So we're gonna throw him back, let him fight another day, see if we can get a bigger one. This, this is a fish right here. See how it's just going out like that? Oh yeah, that's a fish. Yeah, that feels like a nicer one too. Woohoo! Come on, baby, be a legal yellowtail. It's coming in relatively easy. He feels like the last one. We are using some heavy gear for him too. That one might be legal. And we might have our first legal yellowtail here. Yeah, okay. look at that one. That one is a nice one. 
So here we go, our first legal yellowtail of the day. You don't get a whole lot of meat off of them, but when you get your limit, I mean, you can make a nice little meal out of them. There he is. Is it a yellowtail? Mm, I don't know. He's behind the Watch boat. Watch out the motors. You're gonna get caught in the, He's behind the, boat. In the decals. Yeah. Nice one, are you kidding me? Get him Woo. in the boat. That one oh was my gosh. All right, so Clay. It looks again. like I gotta catch up to you That's now. That's right. That is a nice yellowtail right that there. Is. That's bigger than mine, no doubt. Oh yeah. You That's don't even have to measure him. Well, I just wanna see how big he is. So he's, yeah, he's probably what, like 15? Ooh. Awesome. I and love yeah. these fish just because of like how beautiful they are. One thing to know about catching snapper is it's an aggregate bag, meaning- No matter the species. No matter the species, you can only catch 10 per day. So if I caught five mutton and five yellowtail, that will be my limit, because it's 10 per person. So, so far we got two. That's right. Take it. We have a nice little chum slick going, got some ballyhoos here, and the yellowtails have been coming and going, but right now we're just using a little tiny piece of shrimp on a little tiny jig, and we're just sending it back in the current. If you notice, I just keep on feeding line out, and the key is to make that little piece of shrimp look like it's a piece of the chum. Yellowtail, believe it or not, are a pretty smart fish, so we wanna make sure that this piece of shrimp looks as natural as possible. We wanna make it look like it's a piece of chum just flowing on back, but we're just gonna keep on feeding just like this, and then as soon as we see that line rip out, that's how we know that we actually have a yellowtail on. Some of the earliest memories I have of fishing is doing exactly what we're doing. You know, yellowtailing was something that I really enjoyed with my family and I was a little girl doing it. It was something that was easy and... Anyone can do this. Yeah. It's funny that Stephanie says that because it's kind of the same exact thing for me. My earliest childhood memories of fishing was uh, mangrove snappers, which are similar to yellowtail. They're about the same size and I remember my dad used to take me back in the mangroves, put out a little chum bag, some shrimp, and just sit in the channel all day. And he acted like he liked it, but he just enjoyed spending time with me out there. And- It was really all about you. Exactly, exactly. He did it all for me, but mm -hmm. you know, it's cool when you get older and you can kind of take fish into the next level. And it's just cool how I get to show my dad all the species that we catch now and I get to take him with me and put him on the fish. And now you're doing it with your wife and hopefully we'll do this with, with our children. kids and our grandkids. Yeah. Boating's always been a huge part of our life mm -hmm. and that's exactly where we met on a boat. hundred percent at the sandbar. Yeah. We met at the Isla Mirada sandbar <laughs> and here we are doing what we love for the exact same thing that we met doing. That's where Life by the Bow really started. That's right. <laughs> Life by the booty when she was shaking her booty up on the boat at the sandbar. <laughs> well, who, Got him. Don't put so much pressure. I know, I'm loosening my drag a little bit. He doesn't feel like a very big one though. See, we're actually using oversized tackle for these yellowtails. This is a 6,500 pen slammer and 30 pound braid. So it's very easy to break these fish off if you're not paying attention. And sure enough, we got a yellow tail. Nice. That looks like le like a legal size. He looks like he could be. Let's check him. Let's see it. He does look like kind of a little guy though. Yeah, he makes it. Sure enough. Got a little 12 incher there. Boom. So I'm gonna take a break from fishing just because there's a bunch of ballyhoo next to the boat. And I really want to catch a mutton later. So I'm gonna go ahead, pick a few up, and put them in the live well and let Clay focus on catching more yellowtail snapper. And for those of you that don't know, I mean, you don't typically really catch mutton snapper on shrimp and squid. Though you can, a live ballyhoo works best over anything. Pilchard actually works really good as well. But we're just gonna add it to the live well here so we have more in our arsenal. And if we end up running out of bait, at least we got some ballyhoos. So let's see what Stephanie can do. It's been a while since you've used that thing, so let's see if you're sharp.
That's how you catch fish right here. Teamwork. So we just made a little move here. Unfortunately, we lost our yellowtail current. As we mentioned earlier, if you don't have the current, the fish, they just do not bite. However, we came out a little deeper here. We're in about 250 feet and the current's actually ripping out here. It's moving at about, not ripping, but it's moving at about a mile an hour, which is better than what we had uh, near towards the edge. So we're gonna drop down here. We're gonna use those ballyhoos that we had caught earlier as bait. So hopefully they are productive. So we've been drifting this wreck for a while now. And then all of a sudden the current just picked up as soon as the current picked up, she got a bite. It's just so crazy. Current has so much to do with fishing. It's not even funny. But I'll tell you what, I love this. I get to watch her reel in the fish. I don't even have to do anything. And at the end of the day, I get to reap the benefits because I get to eat it <laughs> when she cooks it. We've caught amberjacks here, muttons. Um, trying to think of what else. There it is. Moment of truth. It's still fighting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk forward to keep that line tight. Now reel, 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 reel. There you go, good job. It's mutton, I think. Mutton! Oh! Big mutton! Oh! Look at that, baby! Hurry Monster up! mutton! Oh my goodness! Ah! Look at that! What? Oh! <laughs> I told you! Oh my goodness! You. What? Now, let me ask you. Ah! That's your, that's your biggest mutton you've ever caught, right? Oh, yes! <laughs> have you ever caught this big of a mutton? I have, I have. Oh, but please. that but, thing yeah. is a stud. Oh. Exactly what we were after. Oh, woo. I gotta hey, get a picture with it. That's a trophy right there. <gasps> that is what's so cool about what we do here, man. The fact right. that we had a camera rolling throughout all of that, so freaking cool, man. <laughs> it does not get any better than that. No Look worries. at the size of that thing. He's massive. Woo! Woo! My, I'm not gonna so lie. Cool. My bicep <laughs> is so sore right now. That thing is massive. But I don't give up. I keep going. Woo! <laughs> oh my god. This, we gotta take a picture with this you guy. You wanna know something? What? He tastes good, too. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, it's funny, we were literally talking about it all day today, the current, man. I mean, the current is the difference between a good day of fishing and a bad day of fishing. And it doesn't matter where you're at. It could be inshore fishing, offshore fishing, you know, reef fishing, patch reef. But one thing I can say is as soon as that current shut off, we stopped catching yellowtail. And as soon as it turned back on, that's when we caught this button. And honestly, keep that in mind whenever y'all are fishing, if there's no current, you should probably move. That's a pretty good telltale sign. Go somewhere where you can find current. Look at this, and look at that. What you got there? Oh, I got some homemade ceviche. That's right, so we put the mutton snapper in the freezer, and Stephanie decided that she wanted mm. some yellowtail ceviche on our perfect 
day off here on the boat. Tell us how it is. Delicious. <laughs> Words can't describe, huh? Mm -hmm. It was pretty simple. All I did was I chopped up the fish, obviously. Then I added some cilantro, some peppers, onions, lime, of course. Then I topped it off with some garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper. Let it sit for an hour. And here we have a delicious homemade ceviche recipe. Okay, so do me a favor now. What? Write that out for me so that way I could put it in the video description below. But we don't get too many days like this in the Keys. Absolutely we do. not. We do. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of the times we're working, a lot of the times we have things to do. However, today we decided to bring the camera out and film all of this because this is what we enjoy more than anything. I mean, it's a lot of work to go out on the boat. It's a lot of work to go out and fish, but just coming out here and just enjoying the fish that we caught and especially in something as refreshing as ceviche mm -hmm. and just being out here in the crystal clear water right off the coast of the Florida Keys and just relaxing. And whether you guys are in your own boats, whether you're booking a charter, one thing I have to say is there's tons of ways to get out here and mm -hmm. experience this. Do it at least once in your lifetime because yeah. this is exactly why we do what we do. But you guys are also the reason as well. So we wanna just tell you guys, thank you so much. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and we will, of course, see you guys next week.